When a tigress left her cub in the hands of a man, he found himself at a loss for words. Still, he found the courage to do something unbelievable, and later, the tigress repaid his kindness. Yusuf lived with his wife and daughter in the bustling city. Here, they thrived in their busy lives. Yusuf was a historian by trade and assisted in the local offices. He was a specialist in his field, and his wife stayed at home and looked after their affairs, while his eight-year-old daughter attended school. Everything was as it should have been, that is until one dark, fateful day. It seemed like any other day. Yusuf had arisen for work earlier than the rest of the household. He thought he would pop out and get some donuts to treat the family. However, when he returned to wake his wife and daughter, he found a disastrous scene. His wife was frantic, crying and shaking. Their little girl, Amelia, wasn't responsive. She had a pulse but was completely unconscious. Mother and father quickly realized they needed to go to the hospital. That day, they found out that their daughter had been born with a genetic condition that made her very weak. Not only would she be unable to attend school in the future, but she wouldn't be able to lead a normal life at all. Yusuf and his wife were absolutely devastated. They had no idea what to do. They went home that day feeling utterly defeated. That is until they got an interesting suggestion from a family member. They recommended that they move to a beautiful little village out in the countryside. There, the way of life was different, slower, quieter, better suited for a delicate girl like Amelia. If they were to fully enjoy each other's company as a family, the city would not be the right place for them to live in. After much thought, Yusuf and his wife decided to do it. It would be an adventure for them that could change things up for the better. Amelia deserved to be surrounded by beautiful nature and loving people, people who appreciated the quality of life the country had to offer them. Of course, moving to the countryside offered challenges too. It wouldn't just all be rainbows and sunshine. The family would have to adjust to a different way of living entirely, one that was not fast-paced at all, but rather more community-based. Everyone had their role to play in helping the community thrive in its own way. There were people that raised livestock to provide meat to the townsfolk, whilst others farmed vegetables and grains. Yusuf and his family just had to find where they could fit into the equation, and this is where some problems began to arise. After a few weeks of living in the little village, Yusuf decided he would survey the surrounding lands to map them out. He had some plans to help modernize the village a little. Every day, he went further and further into the woods, slowly documenting as he went. However, one day, he came across something very disturbing. He hadn't been hiking for more than 10 minutes when he came across a contraption that looked unnatural amongst the beautiful nature around it. He approached it cautiously to find that it was a trap of some sort. He found this to be extremely strange. What on earth could someone be trying to trap with such a big device? The answer Yusuf found was shocking to him. He quickly made his way back to the village filled with questions and went straight to the lead farmer of livestock. Yusuf figured that if anyone was going to know what the trap's purpose was, this was the man to ask. He was right, however, the answer he found was not quite what he was expecting. The farmer explained that there was a tiger in the area, a tiger that routinely hunted the farmer's livestock. The villagers had grown tired of its attacks and therefore had planted traps all on the outskirts of the woods as a deterrent. Yusuf understood their motives but was appalled by the fact they seemed not to care whether the tiger was killed or not in the process. He was horrified at this information. He had been under the assumption that everyone in the village valued nature in its highest form, especially a precious wild cat like a tiger. He argued with the villagers about their actions but was outnumbered. It was simple, the big cat prevented them from having a successful season, and so it had to go. What the villagers couldn't anticipate, however, was Yusuf's tenacious attitude towards things he deemed as unjust. So he went to work dismantling the traps as fast as he could to save the animal from a horrible fate. He just didn't quite anticipate running into the actual tiger. It was his third day on the mission of dismantling the traps when he came across a situation he never thought he would ever experience in his lifetime. 
He had just started searching for the traps when he heard a strange low moan. At first, he couldn't quite place it, but he simply followed the sound to see where it led. He thought perhaps it was a new species of bird he hadn't yet spotted. Boy, was he surprised when he saw what it actually was. There before him, tangled in the trap, was a very small tiger. At first, he thought he was seeing things, but when he got closer, his fears were confirmed. There, in front of him, was a tiny tiger who had a broken leg from the horrific trap. Without hesitating, Yusuf began to try and release the trap. He was almost done but then mom showed up. The hair on the back of Yusuf's neck simply stood right up. He turned around to find himself faced with a fully grown tigress staring him down. He was so frightened he didn't know what to do. He simply backed away from the cub and stood still, waiting to see what would happen. That's when the strangest thing occurred. The tigress simply pushed her cub toward Yusuf with her big hat. It seemed she understood that only he could get her baby out of such a predicament. Yusuf didn't hesitate, he went to work straight away and released the cub from the trap. He held the poor little cat in his arms, unsure of what to do next. The tigress simply nudged her cub one more time, then turned her back and walked away. She had just given her baby to Yusuf. Yusuf was at a complete loss for words. Why did she just leave her cub with him? What was he supposed to do? He knew if he took the cub home, the villagers would protest it. But he also knew that if he didn't help the poor little animal, it wouldn't end well. So, he did the unbelievable. Yusuf simply wrapped the cub up with his jacket and made his way home. He knew that he could help the cub heal if given the chance, and that was just what he was going to do. It took about a week before the whole village became aware of the cub living in Yusuf's home. It was safe to say they were not very happy at all. What started off as mild complaints soon began to turn into really nasty comments and pranks being pulled on their household. And one day, the young people of the town went a little bit too far. They lured Amelia to go with them into the woods and then left her there. Naturally, Yusuf and his wife were absolutely frantic. How could they do such a thing? Their child was defenseless and unsure of how to get home. If they didn't find her, she could get really hurt. But then something unbelievable happened. As the couple was about to set off looking for her, Amelia emerged from the woods on the back of the tigress. The tigress had found the poor girl in distress and done what Yusuf had done for her cub, she had saved her. Yusuf found the courage to pet the tigress's hat and then led her to her recovered cub. The two of them reunited with a loud roar, and the entire community had the chance to watch both tigers leave Yusuf's home without harming him or his family. There and then, they realized that she was just a mother trying to provide for her cub, and decided to help Yusuf remove all the traps from the forest. They would learn to live in harmony with the wildcats, and in doing so, they would be in harmony with the whole world. What a beautiful ending! Would you have helped the cub? What do you think of farmers trying to trap a tiger? When certain events cannot be explained by science or logic, these stories are able to inspire fear in everyone. This is how myths and legends are born. This is especially true in small villages where rumors travel very quickly, and people tend to exaggerate for added entertainment. The story we are about to tell today is astonishing, unusual, and it tells how human beings are feared. Let's get started. The story takes place in a small remote village in the Far East, which is located on the outskirts of the Tiger Forest. One morning in January, a local resident went outside to check his surroundings. He was dumbfounded when he saw huge wolf tracks in the freshly fallen snow. They seemed to have come straight out of the forest, meandering along the road, and walking up and down the neighboring houses. Out of fear, the man ran home, picked up a gun, called a friend, and they set off on foot together. Hitting the road, hoping to track down and capture the intruder, can the two find any surprises? They found that the footprints of the two wolves entered a yard of local residents, but there were no traces of them going back on the ground. Does this mean that the wolves are still inside? The men readied their guns and knocked on the gate. The man who lived in the house heard the sound and came out. 
He heard the neighbors say that he didn't see any wolves. The surprised hunter returned home, but they were still worried, a few days passed, heavy snow fell, and now the whole village was covered with fresh snow. He went out into the street in the morning and saw new wolf tracks, which filled the whole village, so the hunter followed them to the house of an old couple who again denied the existence of wolves, and neither did they know where these footprints come from. Panic broke out in the village, no one can explain where these footprints came from, what kind of invisible wolf are they? Why did they come to the village and never leave, people started telling the story to each other, and each time they added their imaginations, one even said that he saw two werewolves wandering the village at night. People left the house in fear, kids were not allowed to go to school or play outside, the men organized patrols and went out every night in hopes of catching these unprecedented animals that were disturbing the peace, when they found nothing, the men realized their patrol had probably scared off the animals, so they decided to hide in different parts of the village and wait for them, and after several nights of hard work, they were finally spotted. One of them suddenly saw what they were waiting for. On the side of the forest, two huge shadows entered the village. It was obviously two huge wolves. They walked slowly along the previous route, and they wander in the yard, then they came to the house of an elderly couple and disappeared behind the gate. The people who had been watching them went to the fence and looked inside. What they saw made them stunned and confused, the owner of the house opened the door and let the two huge wolves in. Afterwards, he looked around, as if to make sure no one saw them, and closed the door behind him. The hunter started banging on the gate, yelling for him to come out immediately and explain to them what was going on in the house, and they realized that they could no longer hide from the wolves, and the old couple told them their story, it turned out that two years ago, while walking in the forest, the body of a female wolf killed by poachers was found, with two cubs lying near the body. At first, the couple thought the pups were dead too, but suddenly they made a barely audible noise and they picked them up immediately, the couple realized the pups were still alive, so they decided to take them home, they couldn't keep them tell anyone in the village about this because it is against the rules and wolves are usually killed because they pose a threat to local residents and livestock that are so, unbeknownst to everyone. They fed the wolf cubs at home and took them back to the forest, but, instead of what they wanted, the wolves did not want to be separated from their savior, and they often came to their house under the cover of night and played with them there until morning, and then they quietly returned to the forest. The old couple kept it as secret as possible, they knew that meeting the wolf would not end well, and they were terrified. The locals were moved by the story, and they agreed not to kill the docile wolves, but to let them return to the forest safely, after all, they did not touch anyone, and even drove the other wolves from the village. Friends, if you like this story, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel, we will tell many wonderful stories, hello everyone, in the following video, we will tell you an interesting story about a wolf who used his kindness to repay a human being. It was one summer, an old man was walking in the forest, he suddenly saw a wolf cub, it was lying under the bushes near the path, he was not as big as a puppy, the old man came to him, but the little wolf cub didn't run away, he was thin and sad, what happened to him? Why doesn't he run away? He thought to himself. When he got very close to the little wolf, the poor thing wanted to run, but he couldn't, he turned out his paw was broken, and the man couldn't leave him there alone, he felt sorry for the little wolf cub, so he put the kid in his bag and went home, at home the old man checked the wolf cub's paws, he was sure his bones were broken, how could this be? He puts a bandage on the animal's paw, which will help the bones grow back together, obviously, this is very painful for the wolf, he is very difficult, but he seems to understand that this person is trying to help him, then the man prepared a place for his new pet and went to feed him, the man called Gray, and about six weeks later, the pup was mostly recovered. His damaged bones seem to have grown back together, and while it is still a bit lame, this wolf pup loves to run around the yard wherever he is, and is quick to run to his owner whenever a man calls it beside, the animal eats what is in the man's hand, accompanies him to the forest like a puppy, and returns home obediently, Gray is a kind wolf who loves humans. Point one day a boy nearby saw this wolf and they even made friends. They were both small so they had the same interest and that was games. The boy brought different sweets to his friends every day. One day Gray disappeared and the old man couldn't find it anywhere, 
Maybe its wildness came into play and it went to the forest where the wolf should live, the boy cried for a long time he longed to see his friend, and the old man promised the boy that when the boy was a little older he would bring him a puppy from the city. Two years passed, the old man completely forgot about his wolf, he lived alone in the house in the village. One day, the boy's mother came to the old man, she cried, she said her son went for a walk in the morning, then disappeared, probably he went to play in the forest and lost his way. The boy's mother ran to ask the people in the village to find the boy in the forest, and the old man took his hunting equipment and went to the forest to find him. For hours passed, suddenly, the old man heard something running out of the bushes, it made a loud noise, the old man picked up his gun and was about to shoot, at that moment, he saw a wolf jumping towards him, the beast was huge and grey and he was right next to him. He noticed that the man stopped for a moment on the path, and he glared at it angrily, and just as the old man was about to shoot, the wolf sprang up again, and he noticed that the wolf was limping on its front paws, and then suddenly he thinking of his grey, so the man with the gun yelled, grey. After jumping a few more times, the wolf stopped and turned its head. It looked at the old man for a long time, and then turned its head to run again, but it only took a few steps slowly and stopped to look back at him. The wolf recognized him. The man, it was really grey, the animal that lived in his yard like a pet dog two years ago, the wolf howled into the bushes of the forest, and it looked around as if telling the man to follow him, what does he want to do? Where does he want me to go? They walked about 100 steps, and suddenly, he saw the boy, who was sleeping in the bushes, and the wolf was sitting beside him. Ah, uh, now I understand why you called me, cried the old man in surprise, you are here to watch over your friend. The man wanted to pet the well-behaved wolf, but the wolf took a step back, and it started whimpering like a crying puppy, and the wolf was still scared because the old man was a human, and humans are the worst enemies of wolves. In the past two years, the wolf has been used to living in the forest as a wild animal, but it knows the boy, that is its friend, so it decides to protect him in the forest. The man took the little boy in his arms, then turned to the wolf and said, thank you for saving the little boy, Gray, and now you can go. After saying this to the wolf, the man walked slowly towards the house, but Gray didn't leave, and he followed the old man, still limping a little, and whining, as if he wanted to say something, and they came to the end of the forest, here you can see the fields. The wolf stopped and looked at the man and the boy for a long time as they went away, and then slowly, as if reluctantly, he disappeared into the forest, and after a while the old man heard him howling, sad as a sob, probably, the wolf is saying goodbye to the man who saved it that day and its little companion boy, this is an amazing story, thank you for watching, remember to love the animals and do something for them. They will really repay you with their kindness, I wish you all the best.